Sen, sen açık mı? To me, it's a bit blurred. Now it's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, hello, I am Otijan, and today I will present theoretical source sharing and clean in on the Tenonet framework. Uh, first, I will talk about motivational research questions, then some background information about how hierarchical uh, scheduling algorithms work, then some analysis and the uh, experiments we did and complete the presentation. So, schedule, um, hierarchical type of bucket is a hierarchical scheduling algorithm that, that, uh, that it was in Linux since 2005. So it's a very old algorithm, and hierarchical link sharing is also uh, a new hierarchical scheduling algorithm that was published uh, last year. So our goal is to compare HTTP and HLS, um, their band sharing uh, properties, and their um, bounds on delay. So it, in a traditional HTTP in onnet uh, inet framework quality exists, so we implement HLS and then compare them. So the uh, questions are, um, how well does uh, HTML and HLS fit into on that king structure, which are hierarchical king structures, and uh, as I said before, in what ways is HLS advantages compared to HTTP? Uh, so hierarchical uh, schedule algorithms are called QDX, and there are two types of QDX, classes and classful. Hierarchical schedule al algorithms are classful, so uh, they will, um, these classes are used to classify packets into one of the classes, and then the algorithm will control the bandwidth sharing between them. Uh, so first and first IQ, for example, these classes, classes and HS and HD are classful. So this is how a hierarchy works, uh, looks like in QDisk. So as you can see, only the uh, leaf classes have uh, a Q disk, another Q disk attached to them. Uh, that's a first of all by default, and you can also change them if you want. So leaf class only hold uh, packets. Uh, there's a root class, and inner classes are like uh, just abstract, just there to control the bandwidth. Um, so uh, I will explain uh, briefly how HLS works. Uh, so it is kind of like a round robin scheduler, but with a hierarchy. So every class except root has a parameter called weight. So what will happen in essence is that each node will share bandwidth to their children proportional to uh, their weights. So each class has balance, like round robin, the number of bicycles out of the transmit. And the class can be active or idle. If it's idle, that means the queue of the class is empty. So it works in rounds and it will propagate balance from root to leaf classes. So this is a simple example. The numbers in the uh, nodes denote weights, and so this B uh, number next to the nodes denote the balance. So at first root has a fallen balance, that means uh, the children of root has uh, weights 3, 4, 3, that means A will get like Third percent of the balance, B14, C13, and then of course B and C will also distribute their balance to the their children according to the weights. And then after the distribution, HLS will look at each node, and then if the balance is enough to decrease packets, balance is bigger than the right, right side of the packet, it will decrease the packet, um, remove balance from the corresponding queue. Uh, leaf class and return it to root. So, for example, here a thousand balance got returned to root and a packet was decreed from A. Then this sector of balance will stay here, and then uh, after HS goes to every leaf, then it will distribute balance again. So, this is the uh, Ivan Alexian hierarchical method, which is the older algorithm. Uh, so each class has a uh, guaranteed rate and maximum rate parameters. They also have priority and quantum values. So quantum values will work like weights in HLS. They will control the proportion of the bandwidth a class gets. And uh, 
can send three modes, can send, can borrow, and can send. And if it's lower, the rate is lower than guaranteed rate, it's green mode. If it's higher than guaranteed rate, lower than maximum rate, it's yellow or red if it's higher than maximum rate. So at first, it, look, it looks like this. What happens that uh, actually we look through uh, levels starting from the lower levels, so leaf classes. Then if there's a green, uh, there are one or multiple green classes, it will add those classes into our round robin and decure from them using the quantum values. And if, for example, there are no green classes on levels zero, then uh, it will go one level up. So here B and C is green. That means we can borrow when it to B1 and B2, C can borrow when it to C1. So it will add only these three classes to the round robin and the Q classes as before until some models, uh, some class changes. So now a uh, comparison of HLS and HGV, both are hierarchical. Uh, HGV has uh, uh, more parameter set compared to put, it can be fine to more. Uh, HS doesn't have a uh, priority at all, or it does, it cannot rate limit specific classes, so there are no maximum rate. There is no guaranteed rate, but um, using weights, you can calculate the guaranteed rate if every class is active and uh, tries to send packets. The rate a class will actually use the guaranteed rate. So, and quantum values are like set automatically by default. You can change them, but by default, it's guaranteed to guaranteed. Uh, it's proportional to the guaranteed rates. And if set like this, they will behave similar to HLS uh, rates. And HLS goes top down. That kind of means um, the bandit A subtree in total guess will be independent of the condition of the leaf classes and HV, it will depend on the uh, bandwidth uh, uh, subtree gets in total will be dependent on the leaf classes. So using this in theory, HL should have better isolation between these subtrees. The excess bandwidth will stay in those subtrees as much as possible. So we uh, try to use, uh, now we um, try to determine the difference between Onnet and Linux. So Onnet um, uh, does not include overhead generated by classifying scheduled operators. Normally, if um, you use small enough uh, hierarchies, uh, this overhead is not significant enough. Uh, so it's, uh, it doesn't change the results between Onnet and Linux. If you use a bigger um, hierarchy, like 100 or, or more classes, depending also on the speed of the link, it can uh, slow down Linux uh, queuing. So Omnet is a approximated clock. It does not have any clock to it, but also the new INET version also introduced features like uh, clocks with uh, clock drift, but the HL implementation does not use that. So it uses normal simulation clock. So it can result in very minor differences between the Linux uh, implementation as HCB uses clocks to regulate the class modes, but HLS is unaffected. So um, how did we implement it? So this is a simple representation of queuing in Omnet uh, with a scheduler and classifier. So uh, a packet will get pushed to the classifier and the classifier classifies the packet and sends it to the corresponding queue. And the, uh, some model uh, connected to the uh, scheduler will try to pull packet from the scheduler and then scheduler will select you, pull packet from the corresponding queue and send the packet. So uh, how should uh, the design be? Uh, so the implementation should work as the same as the queue implementation. And uh, the implementation should be able to use the classifiers and queues uh, already available in its framework. Uh, and uh, leaf packet queues should be freely selectable as in QDIS. By default, there are first and first time queues, but I mean, even another HLS can be leaf queue of its set. So we implement two modules HL scheduler. This is this implements the scheduler functionality. Uh, and the HLS functionality and the HLS queue uh, combines them, uh, classifier queues and scheduler into one compound model. 
So it will look like this. Uh, basically, the only uh, thing uh, that needs implementation is the shell scheduler part. Uh, the other parts are already in INET. And the uh, compound packet qubits is what we use as the uh, HLSQ C++ class, which already handles interaction between like upper layer network service or whatever model is connected here. And um, yeah, hierarchy of HL scheduler needs to be set up using an XML file, uh, likewise in HTV. So now uh, I will show the validation experiments with it. Uh, so it uses three machines. The first one is a packet generator, and the second one will uh, is where the HLs and HV is bound to. And then we record the packets coming uh, to sync. So the packet generator is IPR3, and on the text experiments, use UDP base cap. And this structure is the same on both on and the uh, experiments. Then the Sahara shoes initial experiment. So what should happen here is if you use the one gigabits per second link, uh, so A should get then 700 megabits uh, of speed and A1 should get like 300. So these weights should correspond to the throughput they reach in megabits per second. And as you can see, this is what happens. Uh, during the experiment, we also close some classes and see what happens to the extra bandit. If there is demand, like if V1 closes, then the, all the bandwidth goes to V2, for example, like here in Qubits and the OMNET. The second validation is for HTV. Uh, it also it has like um, also has maximum rate parameters, so we also need to validate that. Uh, so the number series first one is guaranteed rate, and second one is the maximum rate. So as as you can see, HTV uh, on transition can also like uh, Rating successfully, and when flows are getting opened up, the bandwidth gets shared between them uh, perfectly. So, the first time we did this bandwidth sharing uh, comparison, uh, so this theory actually, the, uh, num, uh, the comparison itself is not really important. What's important is that uh, the A, uh, class A is like inactive, so the it does not generate any packets. The queue of the class A is empty. Then, during the experiment, uh, we close class B2 and we try to see what happens uh, to the excess bandwidth. How will it get shared? Um, so, at first, the classes have the same throughput on both uh, algorithms. Then, when class B2 gets closed, in HLS, all the access bandwidth uh, goes to B1. Of course, if B1 didn't have that enough demand, it would go to the other classes. In HTB, uh, even though B1 has enough demand, uh, after some, uh, B1 gets a lot of bandwidth, but uh, after some level, which is like 40 megabits, uh, the bandwidth will get shared between each, every other class. So next, we try to measure, uh, we measure uh, delay during congestion. What that means is that, uh, so we ran experiment four times, and in each one, the class, uh, classes, uh, one class is well behaving, so uh, it is like trying to send that it's guaranteed rate, basically. And the other classes are uh, creating a congestion, and they are trying to send more than their guaranteed rate. So what happens is that, uh, so this end to end delay is over one hop with one second delay. So what happens is that, as you can see, uh, HTB, uh, using HTB, the ind individual classes are more affected by uh, congestion and HLS HL has in general lower end to end delay. Next, we uh calculated uh, jitter so there are three scenarios in this case uh, hls has one htb has two um the re this is the here she used in all of them so the reason HTB has two scenarios is that the bandit sharing uh, logic is different when uh 
costs are like uh, lower than their uh, or equal to their guaranteed rates and when uh, their guaranteed rates is low and the, these costs are like borrowing from root to achieve their throughput but in the end uh, each class has the same throughput uh, but uh, their jitter and, and their like compression is different so this how jitter looks like uh, as you can see, HLS uh, uh, has a lower very low jitter, lower than 0 0.1 in general, 0 0.2 uh, milliseconds. Uh, HTB2 has like as high as 1.5 milliseconds jitter, and HTB1, which is like when the costs are not running, they're all send get their guaranteed rates, HTB1, uh, even uh, can like reach 1 millisecond jitter in some classes. So you can you could say that HTB2 is like the worst case that can happen in HTB. So conclusion. Uh, so it HS uh, achieves class isolation between HTB. And so what that means that the excess bandwidth will get like shared between closest classes on the tree uh, as that leaf class. The jitter resulting from HTB is generally higher than HLS and during congestion the well-being classes are impacted less in HLS compared to HTB. So in future, using HLS implementation, we can also add a rate limiting feature uh, for classes that was also mentioned in the original HLS paper and then test it for uh, the legit ones and rate conformance. OK. Um, yeah, then for this one. Uh, and yeah, do you have any questions? Yeah. Okay, so no questions. Everything is clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for the presentation. And again, I can. Uh, I believe everybody is reachable or Discord. Or, so if you were just shy to ask something, contact directly the presenters on the Discord channel. Thank you very much.